Welcome to a new episode of Tiny Homes. There's a variety of reasons for living in a tiny house. Many people who enter this lifestyle rethink what they value in life and decide to put more effort into strengthening their communities, helping the environment, spending time with their families, or saving money. Please subscribe and turn on the bell to be a part of the community and get the latest updates about new videos. Meet 72-hour cabin designed by Jean Larch, located in Sweden. These tiny buildings are created specifically for the environment that they're in. The purpose of the cabins is to let the people staying in them come close to nature, but in a comfortable way. All cabins are completely off the grid and located on a private island. Simplicity was a necessity from a construction point of view, but also to keep the balance between building and nature. The timber structure is made from the same kind of trees that grows around it, Norway spruce. Pillars lift the floor up from the ground as a sign of respect of nature, thus the footprint of this building is minimal. The name 72-hour cabin, which refers to the amount of time five people who participated in the study conducted about stress, stayed in them. All participants reduced their stress levels drastically. All boards, the ones on the walls as well as the floor, are set a few millimeters apart from each other, partly because of the movements within the material and partly because it filters the sunlight in such a beautiful way, but mostly the reason for this is ventilation. Since there is so much glass, the temperature could be remarkably high when the sun is up, but because the cabins are well ventilated, the indoor temperature rarely differs much from the outdoor climate. Besides, this is not a place for daytime activity. This is the place where you curl up at night to look at the stars. The see-through ceiling is the main feature of these cabins. You don't crawl into a tent and shut out nature with the pull of a zipper. You climb onto a comfortable bed and start counting the stars. The bed basically dominates the floor area. It has the same legs as the cabins themselves, glue laminated pillars. This provides storage underneath. The areas around the bed are carefully calculated to be as small as possible, but still allowing someone to comfortably sit on the edge of the bed or change the sheets. The shelves behind the bed are the elements necessary for screwing on the boards of the gable wall. They were deliberately made larger to make this dual function possible. Having high stress levels? Visit 72-hour cabin and you will relieve stress levels. Let's visit the Boulder Sky Lodges in Norway. Two one-legged cabins float high above Norway's Lysfjord, where the famous Pulpit Rock is located, meaning you can enjoy your morning Americano on the edge of a breathtaking vantage point with a view over the Pine Kingdom below. Each lodge measures 22 square meters and includes two double bedrooms, a kitchen, fully equipped bathroom, and a dining room with great views of the surroundings. Curated to contrast and harmonize with the glacial backdrop, the ceiling and walls are constructed from dark oak, while the dark-toned decor from the Danish design company VIP fills the interior. The furnishings are a tribute to minimal Nordic style. If you decide you want to leave the lodge for the day, you are merely a 15-minute drive from Pulpit Rock, a Norwegian landmark that towers 604 meters above sea level. If you like your eggs with a side of a view across one of the world's most magnificent fjords, then there is perhaps no more perfect place to enjoy breakfast than this dining room, which exquisitely frames Lysfjord with dark tones of the window structure. The architect designed a two-story haven balancing on a steel pillar drilled 3.5 meters into the ground. He added glazing and wrapped the cabin in Canadian cedar wood, which keeps the raw winter climate outside. These mountains are filled with magical pines and boulders placed by the glacier when the ice age came to an end. Welcome to 019 Cabin settled in the lake island called Apple Island in Lithuania. 
The tasks for architects was to create a transportable cabin that would be constructed in a workshop and brought to the site via a wooden bridge. The search for a solution led to the design of a modular system. The system defines a structure as set by individual elements consisting of columns, floors, walls, roofs, etc. In such a way, the building can be transported in assembled or individual elements depending on the situation. The modular system allows the construction of different sizes and configurations of the building. At the base design stage, it was unclear where the building would exactly settle. The only known aspect was climate elements such as wind, water, and temperature. As a result, the roof of the cabin looks like floating in the wind. It also protects the structure from the heat of the sun and has a shape that collects rainwater, pours it from one part to another, and exhibits water flow. The building adapts to natural terrain by standing on slender legs of variable heights. The metal used in the construction and facade is non-colored, leaving a unique pattern created during its manufacturing process. That's why all modular cabins have slightly different facade graphic. Inside the metal shell lies a warm, natural plywood finish. The site did not require local construction works and the visually light volume of the building blended harmoniously into the unique natural landscape. All interior components were designed individually for the cabin. 23 square meters of space holds a plot of two double bedrooms, a living room, a kitchen, and a bathroom. This extensive function was made possible by transformable furniture. The folding glass door opens fully and the interior expands to an outdoor terrace overlooking the lake. Pick your apple on Apple Island. Let's move to Ecuador where we visit Tea Room designed by Natura Futura Arquitectura. Elevated over a water channel in the agricultural area in Ecuador's Los Rios province is a tea room. The 32 square meter space was inspired by an elderly man, Mr. Pepe, who every afternoon has a cup of tea or coffee with his family. Natura Future's objective was to maintain this tradition within an adaptable space that generates a connection with the family as well as the surrounding natural landscape. The project measuring 8 by 4 meters rises on a water channel resting on two pre-existing concrete structures that were to be used for the construction of a bridge. The use of fixed and sliding glass panel allows to open up the environment and blur the built limit, giving continuity to the landscape. The flexible program is complemented by multifunctional counter and bathroom. The view from the inside ends with folding lattice doors that open onto the terrace balcony where a folding handrail defines the last limit of the project. That together with the river stone side stairs allow the possibility to sit and have a direct connection with the water. Tea room emerges as a gesture to understand the possibilities of an open space within a natural environment. It's established as a flexible space where morning yoga, weekend visits, afternoon tea, and Sunday football matches can all be held in one space. Tea room reflects on minimal architecture that can integrate, understand, and be part of its environment, maintaining a space between the new and the existing to generate spaces for sharing. Thanks for stopping by. Please subscribe and turn on the bell to hear about our latest videos if you are new to my channel. Stay tuned.